Hello, and welcome to another Royal Reviewer channel episode. Have you ever wondered how Coronation Chicken got its name? And did you know a future First Lady was a newspaper correspondent at the Coronation Service? Here's 50 little known facts about the Coronation Day of Queen Elizabeth II. Number 1. Westminster Abbey has been the setting for every coronation since 1066. Before the Abbey was built, coronations were carried out wherever was convenient, taking place in Bath, Oxford and Canterbury. Number 2. Queen Elizabeth II was crowned on the 2nd of June 1953 in Westminster Abbey. Her Majesty was the 39th Sovereign to be crowned at Westminster. Number 3. Queen Elizabeth II is the sixth Queen to have been crowned in Westminster Abbey in her own right. The first was Queen Mary I, who was crowned on the 1st of October 1553. Number 4. The Queen succeeded to the throne on the 6th of February 1952, on the death of her father, King George VI. She was in Kenya at the time, and became the first sovereign in over 200 years to accede while abroad. Number 5. The Queen's grandmother, Queen Mary, aged 81, was the first Queen to see a grandchild ascend to the throne. However, she died before the coronation took place. Number 6. The coronation service used for Queen Elizabeth II descends directly from that of King Edgar at Bath in 973. The original 14th century order of service was written in Latin and was used until the coronation of Elizabeth I. Number 7. The incumbent Earl Marshal is responsible for organising the coronation. Since 1386, the position has been undertaken by the Duke of Norfolk. The 16th Duke of Norfolk was responsible for the Queen's coronation in 1953, and he was also responsible for the state funeral of Sir Winston Churchill in 1965, and the investiture of the Prince of Wales in 1969. Number 8. The Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh were driven from Buckingham Palace to Westminster Abbey in the gold state coach pulled by eight grey gelding horses. Cunningham, Tovey, Noah, Tedder, Eisenhower, Snow White, Tipperary and McCreary. Number 9. The coronation bouquet was made up of white flowers, comprising of orchids and lilies of the valley from England, Stephanotis from Scotland, orchids from Wales and carnations from Northern Ireland and the Isle of Man. Here we see Queen Elizabeth II with a replica of her coronation bouquet. Number 10. The Duke of Edinburgh wore full dress naval uniform for the journey to and from the Abbey. While in the Abbey he wore a coronet and his Duke's robe over his uniform. Number 11. The Queen's coronation dress, designed by British fashion designer Norman Hartnell, was made of white satin and embroidered with the emblems of the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth in gold and silver thread. Number 12. Since the coronation, the Queen has worn the coronation dress six times, including the opening of Parliament in New Zealand and Australia in 1954. Number 13. Buckingham Palace housemaids, chefs and gardeners gathered inside the Grand Hall at Buckingham Palace to see the Queen leave for Westminster Abbey. Number 14. The Queen's coronation service began at 11.15am and lasted almost three hours. Number 15. On her way to the coronation, Her Majesty wore the George IV state diadem. Made in 1820, the diadem features roses, shamrocks and thistles, with 1,333 diamonds and 169 pearls. Number 16. The Sovereign's procession was made up of 250 people, including church leaders, Commonwealth Prime Ministers, members of the royal household, civil and military leaders, and the yeomen of the guard. Number 17. The Archbishop of Canterbury conducted the service, a duty which has been undertaken since the conquest in 1066. For the first time in 1953, a representative of another church, the moderator of the Church of Scotland, also took part. Number 18. The coronation service fell into six parts. The recognition, the oath, the anointing, and the investiture, which includes the crowning, the enthronement, and the homage. Number 19. The recipe for the anointing oil contains oils of orange, 
roses, cinnamon, musk and ambergris. Usually a batch is made to last a few coronations, but in May 1941 a bomb hit the deanery, destroying the file, so a new batch was made. Number 20. One of the more notable installations for the coronation was the annex at the west end of Westminster Abbey. This provided the necessary space in which the processions could form and disperse unseen by the crowds. Number 21. During the investiture, the Queen first put on the newly made Colobium syndosis, a loose linen lawn garment, and then a robe of cloth of gold called the Dalmatic or Super Tunica. The Lord Great Chamberlain presented the Golden Spurs, the symbol of chivalry, after which the Archbishop of Canterbury presented a jewelled sword and then the Armils, the golden bracelets of sincerity and wisdom. Finally, the Queen put on stole and cloth of gold robe royal and received the orb, the coronation ring, the glove and then the scepter. Number 22. Prince Charles was the first child to witness his mother's coronation as sovereign. Princess Anne did not attend the ceremony, as she was considered too young. Number 23. Prince Charles received a special hand-painted children's invitation to his mother's coronation. Number 24. A total of 8,251 guests attended the Queen's coronation ceremony at Westminster Abbey. Number 25. 129 nations and territories were officially represented at the coronation service. Number 26. Some people in the Abbey witnessed their fourth coronation. Princess Marie Louise, Queen Victoria's granddaughter, had also seen the coronations of King Edward VII in 1902, King George V in 1911 and King George VI in 1937. Number 27. The Queen was crowned in St Edward's chair made in 1300 for Edward I and used at every coronation since that time. It is permanently kept in Westminster Abbey. Number 28. The St Edward's crown, made in 1661, was placed on the head of the Queen during the coronation service. It weighs four pounds and 12 ounces and is made of solid gold. Number 29. After the crown, the orb, also made in 1661, was the most important piece of regalia. It is a globe of gold, surrounded by a cross girdled by a band of diamonds, emeralds, rubies, sapphire and pearls, with a large amethyst at the summit. Number 30. The coronation ring, known as the Wedding Ring of England, was placed on the Queen's forefinger of her right hand in accordance with tradition. Made for the coronation of King William IV in 1831, the ring has been worn at every coronation since then, except of Queen Victoria, whose fingers were so small that the ring could not be reduced far enough in size, and an alternative was created. The ring on the right was Queen Victoria's alternative. Number 31. BBC coverage of the coronation was a breakthrough for the history of broadcasting. It was the first service to be televised and, for most people, it was the first time they had watched an event on television. Number 32. 27 million people in the UK out of the 36 million population watched the ceremony on television and 11 million listened on the radio. Number 33. There were more than 2,000 journalists and 500 photographers from 92 nations on the coronation route. Number 34. Among the many foreign journalists was Jacqueline Bouvier, later the First Lady of the United States of America, Jackie Kennedy, who was working for the Washington Times Herald at the time. Number 35. The return route was designed so that the procession could be seen by as many people in London as possible. The 7.2 km route took the 16,000 participants two hours to complete. Number 36. Many people camped in the Mall to catch a glimpse of the procession, including a family who had sailed all the way from Australia in a catch for the occasion. Thousands more celebrated throughout the country and the Commonwealth with street parties. Number 37. The Ministry of Food granted 82 applications for people to roast oxen 
if they could prove that by tradition an ox had been roasted at previous coronations. A welcome concession at a time the meat ration was still two shillings a week. Number 38. The Imperial State Crown, which was worn by the Queen during her return to Buckingham Palace, contained four pearls, traditionally believed to have been Queen Elizabeth I's earrings. Number 39. On the way back to Buckingham Palace, the Queen wore the newly made purple robe of estate. The embroidered cipher of the Queen and border of wheat ears and olive branches took a total of 3,500 hours to complete by a team of 12 seamstresses from the Royal School of Needlework. The silk for the embroidery came from a silk farm in Lullingston, Kent. Number 40. Just under 30,000 men took part in the procession. 3,600 from the Royal Navy, 16,100 from the Army and 7,000 from the RAF, 2,000 from the Commonwealth and 500 from the Colonies. There were 6,700 reserve and administrative troops, while 1,000 officers and men of the Royal Military Police were brought in to assist the Metropolitan Police. A further 7,000 police were drawn from 75 provincial forces. Number 41. The Queen Salote of Tonga won the hearts of the waiting crowds by refusing to raise the roof of her carriage for protection despite the rain. Number 42. The principal decorations for the processional route were in the Mall, where there were four twin-spanned arches of tubular steel that were illuminated at night. The arches were lifted into place by giant mobile cranes. Linking the arches down the route were the long lines of standards mounted with golden crowns and each hung with four scarlet banners bearing the royal monogram. Number 43. The Queen appeared with her family on the balcony of Buckingham Palace, still wearing the Imperial State crown and the royal robes, to greet the cheering crowds. Her Majesty appeared again on the balcony at 9.45pm to turn on the lights of London. Lights cascaded down the mall lighting the huge cipher on the Admiralty Arch and turning the fountains in Trafalgar Square into liquid silver until all the floodlights from the National Gallery to the Tower of London had been illuminated. Number 44. Coronation chicken was invented for the foreign guests who were to be entertained after the coronation. The food had to be prepared in advance and florist Constance Bry proposed a recipe of cold chicken in a curry cream sauce with a well-seasoned dressed salad of rice, green peas and mixed herbs. Constance Spry's recipe won the approval of the Minister of Works and has since been known as Coronation Chicken. Number 45. Numerous official photographs were taken inside Buckingham Palace after the coronation. However, the most memorable of those were taken by Cecil Beaton. For his defining image, he posed the Queen in front of a backdrop depicting Henry VII's chapel in Westminster Abbey. Number 46. The official artist for the coronation was Polish artist Felikis Topolski, who produced a permanent record of the occasion in the lower corridor in Buckingham Palace. The painting was made in 14 sections, each well over a metre high. Number 47. The Queen's Lord Lieutenants commissioned artist Terence Cuneo to paint the coronation ceremony and in 1954, Herbert James Gunn painted a state portrait of the Queen in her coronation outfit. Number 48. On the 2nd of June 1953, news reached that Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay had made it to the summit of Mount Everest. The Queen presented the 14 members of the expedition with special edition coronation medals with the extra wording Mount Everest Expedition. Number 49. The first overseas tour the Queen undertook after the coronation was to Bermuda, Jamaica, Panama, Fiji, Tonga and New Zealand, starting in November 1953. Her Majesty returned in 1954, visiting Australia, Ceylon, now Sri Lanka, Aden and Uganda, going home in Britannia from Aden via Malta and Gibraltar. And finally, number 50. On the 24th of June 1953, the honours of Scotland, the crown, the sceptre and the sword were carried before the Queen in a procession from the Palace of Holyrood House to St Giles Cathedral. Thank you for watching this video. 
If you have enjoyed it, then please give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to comment and share on social media. Also, hit that notification bell so that you know whenever I upload a new video. So, from me in Shropshire, goodbye.